Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We're right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church right on the ocean here. In fact, our, our condo is on the 25th floor right over the top of the altar, uh, of just right next to, to St. Augustine's Church. So if you've been to Hawaii, you know you know St. Augustine's Church. And uh, if you're ever in Hawaii, we'd love to have you guys just go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com, and and fill out the contact form. Maybe we can have coffee or something like that together. We've got a really interesting and important uh, guest with us today. His name is, is Dr. John Aquaviva. He's a PhD in uh, exercise physiologist and in the field of uh, fitness. Um, we talk about uh, um, his new book, Improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and Common Sense. And this is a real big area right now in the news. So we'll be back with our guest, John Aquaviva, in just a moment. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife, Cindy, always asks me to start off our show with uh, the sign of the cross in Hawaiian, so we'll do that. Ake makua, ke keiki, ame ke ohana hemalele, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want to remind everybody our new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, uh, is been out now for several months. It's still um, doing very well. In fact, it was, it's been hitting in the top five in Christian men's book on Amazon. So go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com, or go to Amazon, or Sophia, or EWTN's catalog, or your local Catholic store, or even on Barnes & Noble's in the secular uh, places you can go to get that book too. But I'm gonna read to you an excerpt from the book right now. Um, this is uh, one, of the, one of the 12 rules. This is from rule number five. And it's the great cosmic chasm. Now we have this thing on YouTube where we uh, do these little 60-second features uh, from the book, little excerpts using AI and the whole and the cowboy theme. So if you go to the Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel, you can find these and share them with your friends. But this is uh, this is the one on uh, on um, bridle uh, bridle your passions and let good things run wild. The excerpt reads like this: the great cosmic chasm. Disordered passion is simply an out-of-control drivenness, an unbridled excess of wanting for a good that God created, and so it becomes out of control. It is a drivenness to have or to consume something that can never satisfy. It is like someone eating air who is only filling himself with more emptiness. That great cosmic chasm in our heart can only be filled with the presence of our infinite, eternal God. But being the gentleman that God is, he will not force his way into that chamber. We must seek him and respond to him and open the door to our heart. Lord, we invite you into our hearts. Amen. Well, uh, our guest today is Dr. John Aquaviva. Actually, John, I think, I think this might be your third time on our show. Uh, very rarely that we have a returning guest. And, uh, and I've been on your show, too. What, what is the name of your show? Can you tell our guests, our listeners? It's called Faith, Faith in Sport. It's found on Radio Maria. Radio Maria, how cool! Yeah. And uh, before we get into this, the, the new the, your new book, improving your sportsmanship through Catholic teaching and common sense, we want to remind our audience get that get them to know you a little bit. But to me, this is such a critical area right now. I know yeah. it's for both for both men and women, but specifically, it's such an important area for young men is is being involved in team team type sports, especially team type sports. Uh, but tell us tell us first a little bit about about uh, your own walk with the Lord. Sure. Uh, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. I'm one of seven, uh, both to uh, both backgrounds, uh, nationality, uh, Italian, and virtually everybody in, that comes from Italy and that is in Italy is, is Catholic. And my mom did a great job of instilling the faith in me. In fact, I just wrote her. I, I just got a couple copies of the book because it's brand new. And I, one of the first ones, in fact, the first one I signed was I sent to my mom. She was a great writer. And I said, thank you for all you've done teaching me the faith and i'm like most people i being born and raised catholic um, i had a reversion and it was because i was reading first and second book of peter and that 
energized me, the message that Peter wrote in those small letters uh, reinvigorated my faith. I, I, I started attending the sacrament of confession more regularly, and I found more meaning in the Eucharist. And so much so that about 15 years ago, I stopped my life as a professor, and I felt I was called to the priesthood, and I entered the seminary for the Diocese of Richmond, Virginia. I was there for two years, and then God kicked me out, as they say. And I eventually met uh, this, this gal, Alicia. Uh, we married, and now we have five kids. And then in the process of returning to being a PhD in exercise science, I've written three books. All of them have similar names, but on different topics. And this new one, um, I'm happy to share with you. And my faith, Bear, is uh, as strong as ever, stronger than ever, I would say, and I get energy from interviews like this. I, I love talking the faith, and I, I, I get energy from uh, from you because you're a faithful guy. And one of the, my favorite things you said when you came to spoke to our men's conference last year was you said, it's a thinking man's religion. Mm. And, I, and I've said that, and I've repeated that quote, and I love the depth of it. I love the richness of it. I love the history of it. Mm. And I, I'm on fire as more about the faith more than ever. But well, you go back to that first Peter where he said, uh, uh, be prepared to, sh to, sh to share a reason for your hope, you know, reason. And so uh, it's interesting, the title of your new, new book, uh, I'm gonna read it out, what, Improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and Common Sense. Sportsmanship. Yeah, sportsmanship, I'm sorry. But that, that's, that common sense, of course, that goes back to Aristotle. And of course, yeah. Thomas Aquinas was a big Aristotle fan, and it's very Catholic to just use common sense. And one of those common sense areas, I just want to get right into it. We probably won't cover the, it all before the first uh, break here, but one of the most confusing things right now is, in, in speaking of common sense, is the complementarity, uh, the natural complementarity between a man and a woman. You know, we, we look at yeah. we look at them physically and you can tell that they go together. <laughs> you know, you, uh, and, and, and yet now with all this gender confusion, uh, there's nothing I think that, that, re, that um, reveals the the confusion and the um the uh of of the woke uh the wokeness of it than than in sports where you have women or men who think they're women uh playing in women's sports uh, uh changing in women's locker rooms so i know that's an area that you've covered uh you have a special chapter on that book can we talk a little bit about the common sense uh, uh catholic view on that yeah absolutely the um, the U.S. Catholic bishops, I'm going to quote them in a little bit because they made a great set of statements on the whole issue. But, Bear, this is, as you mentioned, it, it's not only confusion within a great deal of our society. I know practicing Catholics who struggle with embracing this concept of, no, men and women are truly different and they deserve their own arena. They, it is not correct. It's not good. It's not right. Uh and, and physically speaking, it's unfair to have anybody that is a guy or was a guy to be competing against women. And one of the things I think about this, Bear, is that not only is this one of the most, in fact, I would argue that it's the most discussed topic within the world of sport, this transgender athlete issue. It's, I will say, over the past year, it's one of the most discussed topics in our culture, right? This has gained a great deal of traction the good thing is, is battles are being won uh, throughout the country, throughout the world, and I think the war is going to be is going to be won on this issue. But there's still more battles to be had. There's still more uh, conversations to be engaged in, and we need to keep plowing through this because, bear, nothing is more obvious in God's creation that there are men and that there are women, and logic and common sense leaves the room when you say, for instance, that a man is a man and a woman is a woman and there's no changing of the two. And the interesting thing is about this, and I'll, I'll, this is a good way to kind of kick off this or continue to kick off the this topic. Where I saw this Catholic speaker and he said to this woman in a debate, he said, could I be a Chinese woman? You know, he's like a 40-year-old man. He goes, can I be a Chinese woman? And the woman says, well, no, of course not. And he says, 
well, could I be a porcupine? And she, and he, she says, well, don't be ridiculous. And then he says, could I be 14? I'm 43. Could I be 14 years old? And she said, no, of course not. And he goes, why is it that logic is engaged in, in those three examples, and then when you talk about a man or a woman, logic is disposed of and thrown out the window, and somehow we are, because of certain agendas and certain terminologies, that we believe, though, that even though you can't be a porcupine, you can't be 14, and you can't be a, a, a different ethnicity, but you can somehow change sex. And nothing is more basic to God. And I think it's so interesting that, you know, when John Paul II, St. Paul, Saint uh, Pope John Paul II, his for yeah. his lectures on the theology of the body. The very first uh, homily was Genesis one, you know, or Genesis two, I guess, where he said he made them man and man and woman, female and male. He made them, and they he made them right. for each other. We're talking with uh, Dr. John Aquaviva. His new book is Im "Improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and and Common Sense." We'll be right back with more with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men out there to go to Bear's School of Manliness and join our man cave. We have Zoom meetups about uh, once every two or three weeks where all the men in the cave get together and we just talk story, Have usually have a, a manly beverage and a cigar while we're talking story on Zoom. And then we have a three-year curriculum on, on the School of Manliness. So check it out, bearschoolofmanliness.com. And I want to remind you, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone?, has uh, has been up to number five on in Christian men's books, so it's really hitting a hitting a certain um, uh, in kind of um, deep uh, place in, in in men's and women's hearts. But I want to say I was in, I was in Montana. Our guest John Aquaviva is with us, Dr. John Aquaviva. I was in Montana uh, in in November, uh, John, and I was speaking doing a speaking tour on my book, and I went to a Catholic yeah. universe a Catholic university there. And they, the, because academia has more and more and more been taken over, especially in the liberal arts area, by women, it's becoming yeah. a, a feminized, I wouldn't say feminized, it's become a, a, a feminist environment, but not feminine. 
uh, uh, the professors there were up in arms that I would come and speak at the college on 12 Rules for Manliness. Just the, They hadn't even read the book, just the title of the book. It got so bad that the bishop actually wrote a letter and had the priest uh, from the local um, you know, uh, ministry there on campus stand up and say, we're inviting him to speak. We don't necessarily agree with what he's saying or disagree with what he's saying, but we want him in the interest of free speech. We want him to be able to speak. But there were three um, uh, feminist um, professors, women professors in the back, <clears throat> just waiting for me to say something. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, that they could, you know, get up in arms about. And basically what I talked about was men are, um, the word man comes from the word ver in Latin, which means virtue. And I talked about, mm -hmm. I talked about how manliness is, is, is pursuing heroic virtue. What can you say wrong with that, you know? But now you talk about <clears throat> this situation, what's happening um, with the gender, the whole gender issue. Um, it's the thing about sports is it's specifically in an environment which since I was young uh, has been taken over I don't say taken over but predominantly most most elementary schools most high schools most colleges now academia is becoming a very feminine a very feminine uh, <laughs> it, it, women have really are beginning more and more to dominate that arena and specifically yeah. feminists are and so of course right there is a the battleground with the young the, the young uh, minds and hearts of of our children and so the confusion um what 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 do, where do you see the battle how do you see the battle being won the battle being won in a couple ways uh, first of all i i think because this is elevated so quickly it's it's reached the hearts and minds and in radio shows and tv shows and so forth so quickly that often when information and topics like this, when they escalate so quickly, they usually de-escalate to the point of it's a shooting star in our rear view mirror. Mm. Now, will this be around for a long time? Uh, I don't know. I, I think actually, because it lacks so much common sense, it lacks so much logic, it lacks basic knowledge of biology, anatomy and physiology. If you ever notice, Bear, one of the things that these radio shows or TV shows will do is they will not, they will avoid asking the opinion of an exercise physiologist because our textbook that we use for exercise physiology, there's about four out there that exercise physiologists at the undergrad level use, devotes a 19 page chapter to what's called the sex differences mm. in sport and, and exercise. And they go from one topic to the next one point to the next to show that not only are there are differences there are vast differences between the two and they they will interview for for instance like a former woman athlete or a current guy athlete who who says maybe well you know this is a uh, this is a topic that needs further discussion whatever the case is notice they will never ask an exercise physiologist because even if an exercise physiologist is liberal they can't deny the science. It's not called exercise, I think so. It's called exercise science. This mm. is a science-based field in which there have been thousands of research studies, in particular, that have showed the differences between men and women. And the list of differences, Bear, is this long. It's muscle size, muscle fiber contraction, power of the muscle, lung size, heart size, vessel size. All of that. So just, just so just taking some hormones isn't going to change that. No, of course not. The NCAA requires one year of hormonal therapy. That does nothing to the size differences of the heart. Nothing to the lung differences of the heart. Nothing to the muscle size and the explosiveness of the guy's muscles versus the girl's. I think they've there, all. Me, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just 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 a point to show this explosive difference, and I, I mentioned this in the book in the transgender athlete chapter, I give three facts that I hope to kind of land the plane on the whole thing. But mm. bear, grasp this following. In the, the WNBA, there have been around 20 dunks in WNBA play. The WNBA is Really, is that all? 20, yeah, there's, I think it's 22 right now. It's such a big deal that, that websites have devoted themselves to this stat, that who dunked, who was against, what time of the game it occurred, there's less than 30 in the history of the WNBA. There are in the NBA, on average, eight to 10 dunks per game. What else needs to be said about this? 
I filled the chapter with other facts, but literally, does anything else need to be said? There's eight to 10 dunks per NBA game, and in the WNBA, in the history of the 20 plus year league, there's been less than. 30. And you know, but and it goes right back to, um, you know, the, the the nature of the woman and the nature of the man. I mean, we say that one of the primary reasons, one of the primary roles of the man is to protect and to provide. And and, right. we, and women have been to, told a lie that you can have all the you whatever a man can do you can do better better it seems to me feminism basically is just saying hey you women you can be men that's basically sure. it it's not like you can be more feminine you can be sure. a man and 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 so uh, I, I feel so bad because the younger women especially have been just given this lie and they so women of my generation. Um, you know, the generation before, I was raised by a mom that was basically at home. And then later in life, she had a very beautiful retail store that she ran after the kids were kind of out of the house. But but, um, but then then in my generation, the more and more women came to the workplace, which is great, more power to them. But, the, yeah. but, but you have to decide, do I want to be a mom or do I want to be, have a great career? Because it's, it's the woman that goes, that bears the child, that breastfeeds the child, that nurtures the child in its younger years. And to tell a woman that you can have it all, that you can have a career, you can have a very successful career, and also be the, the, the mom your children really need, is probably yeah. in most cases a lie. And the women that have bought into that now, what's so sad is that many of the women now, because they're pursuing that, delay even considering having a child till their 30s. And, and, and then they have a challenge finding a man who wants to be married to a career woman. And by they're in their 40s, no, it's too late. And so the, the, yeah. it's like the, there's this cascading effect. And I, I have a feeling that this, this place where, where you really do say, um, women, you can be men, you can be, a, as a feminist, you can do whatever a man can do. And men, guess what? You get to be women. It just shattered the whole role of, fe uh, of femininity, not feminism, yeah. but femininity. And, uh, but I think that this is the place where they overplayed their hand. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about, was it John McEnroe that was asked about, uh, who was the, I forget, the great, the great, uh, the two sisters out of the great, great tennis yeah, stars. Yeah, Venus and Serena Williams. Yeah, and incredible was, women. I'm sure they could both yeah. destroy me on the tennis court. But yeah. he said that 700 ranked man on the tennis tour could beat them. And okay. they, I, heard, I saw him being interviewed and he said, do you want to apologize for that? And he goes, well, no. It's okay. just because God made us this way. Women have a very important and beautiful place. And one of the roles of a man is to is to enable and to lift uh, a woman so that she can flourish and be all that all that God is calling her to be. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Right. John Aquaviva. Uh, we we got another minute before we're going to break break take a break. But do you have anything you any other thoughts you want to share on this before we take a break? Yeah, I thought this was an interesting. Uh, point and shows how powerful this is and why we're winning the war. Mm. Martina Navratilova, speaking of tennis, yes, right? she, yeah, she she's came out. Yeah. One of the greatest tennis players of all yeah. time. She was on. A, she's a board member or was a board member of an organization called the Athletes Ally, and mm -hmm. it was an LGBTQ-based movement to uh, make sure that there's fairness and respect for the people that are LGBT, right, in this community. Martina Navratilova is a self-professed. Right. She's a, a lesbian. Yes. And she came out and said two years ago, remember, she's a member of this national board, international board. And she said, but I don't agree with athletes allies position that that men can say that they're a girl and then compete with women. And guess what, Bear? They kicked her off the board. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And here she is, what, one of the greatest tennis players of all time. And she's yeah. wise. Right. She mm -hmm. knows what she's talking about. And this is an example of they had a chance to do something that is based in wisdom and biology, and they chose to fire her instead. They, they, chose, I, I, they chose false ideology. We're talking with Dr. John Aquaviva. We're going to come back in a moment talk more about his newest book, Improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and Common Sense. John, where can they find your book, and where can they find you? Yeah, they can find me uh, at wingate.edu. Uh, I, I work at the university. You can find out a little bit more about me. You can find out about uh, what I do in the book and speaking world at catholicbodyimage.com. And you can find the book by just putting in anything Aqua Viva and sportsmanship <laughs> and Amazon. Yeah, that's what I found. Okay, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. 
Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You got to become a man. John Wayne said, you're born a boy, but you got to become a man. When I was a boy, men around me lived up to these words. I wanted to live up to their cowboy code. It seemed the men, the fathers around me, all sought to do the same. I wanted to be tough like these men, to be fair like them, and I wanted to stand for something. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite uh, everyone to go to our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel, where <clears throat> all of our radio shows <clears throat> are available to you. If, if you subscribe, it'll be, it'll be sent to you on, on Saturdays um, uh, in the video version. And then we have, uh, I have a whole, uh, a whole series on, um, of, of 60 second shorts that you can share with your friends, all cowboy themed, all based on uh, the newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness. We have about 60 of those um, uh, that, that share an excerpt that's really provocative, really cool, and you can share on your own social media. So go to our website, Bear Wising Spirit Adventure, and subscribe. Our guest today is Dr. John Aquaviva. He is the author, he's, he's an exercise physiologist. PhD at Wingate University, and his um, his newest book, "Improving Your Sportsmanship Th Through Catholic Teaching and Common Sense." Uh, we've been talking about the whole uh, transgender confusion out there, and, and you know the, the, the saddest thing about that, John, is is <clears throat> it's it's actually um, I forget what the name of the book is, where they, the diagnosis, the different diagnosis, but it's considered gender dysphoria, and right. unfortunately, the pe the people who <clears throat> A guy who thinks that he is a woman is probably actually suffering a lot. Uh, right. Maybe had been a victim in some way in his life, and uh, or uh, in other ways. And he, what he really needs, is help, and understanding, and uh, and um, and helping to deal with this instead of pushing him off a cliff. Uh, right. So many of those that go through the gender uh, transition, uh, you know, are basically taking out a woman's, um, you know. A hysterectomy, or or whatever they're doing with the, with a the man, and uh, changing their hormones, basically uh, damaging them severely and sterilizing them. Uh, it's it, it it it's it's just scary what's happening. Uh, but that's not helping them. Mo people who go yeah. through that gender transition, I guess they're more suicidal, depressed than than those that don't. But it does show you that uh, the depression in the uh, the depression in the in the the confusion in that area is very real, and those people should be helped instead of harmed uh, by, by what the so-called health profession is doing. But it, you may have a few more thoughts on that, but let's go into the other areas of your, of your book on sportsmanship. Because sure. I, yes. I think there, there was a young man that came to my office <clears throat> a week ago, and he's, he's, uh, he's young, he's in his 30s. Um, he's dating a woman who has a son, and uh, I gave him a copy of my book, and in the book it talks about how if you're a, a dad, don't just take your son to the soccer field or the baseball field, but coach. And so right. he was reading my book, and he took his son to the um, to the baseball field the other day, and the coach co had moved. The, the coach they had had moved, and the other assistant coach really didn't know what he was doing. He was just there and willing. And so now all of a sudden, he's the coach of this baseball team, 
And uh, I, I, mean, I think sportsmanship, especially team sports, are so imper- important, especially in the development of a young man. And I wonder what your thoughts are, what your, how your book approaches that. No, there's no doubt. Um, there, many people have said this, that they love youth sports, but they don't like the adults that are involved in youth sports. And in, in fairness, and I want to start off with this because I think it's vital to the and important to the conversation that youth sports are virtually all, they all run because of people that volunteer. The, the coaches are all volunteers. The, the referees and the officials are paid so little they might as well be volunteering. And in some cases they do volunteer. And they have these great opportunities. And, and most of them, Bear. there's no question in my mind are neutral to the situation or are positive to the situation but i think more and more that the parents are overstepping their bounds because they have more they're more involved in the process than ever a good example not the only example mm. but a good example is this when i was growing up, i was a big baseball player i played baseball in college i, I played from the time i was young I, I played in an adult semi-professional league for years after college and so forth I had a chance to play professionally in italy and so forth but there was teams in every city in multiple leagues usually in every city for people like me college age just beyond college age and so forth but today as you probably know there are what are called travel teams right and these travel teams cost yeah. up to around uh, eight to ten, twelve thousand dollars a year. Now, in and of itself, it sounds like well, if you have the money, you can go ahead and do it, right? You can go and do it, um, which is great. I think a great opportunity because they truly travel to these great cities, like here in North Carolina. They might go down to Charleston, South Carolina, or even down to Florida, up to Richmond, Virginia. Travel all around the region and play against these other all-star type teams. Now, the reason I bring this up and what it has to do with adults and why sportsmanship has become such a big issue is they have more in the fight. If they're spending $10,000 per summer, Bear, I'm not exaggerating. If they're spending 10,000, they have a bigger dog in the fight and they become more aggressive as parents regarding playing time, bad calls, especially made against their kid or at least their team, right? And, um, And situations that occur on the field that where the kid may get hurt, uh, it's an accident sometimes, and the parents display bad sportsmanship. And they'll do, uh, all of these uh, things will come up. They will email, text the coach, tell them why they're wrong and not playing their son. They're, they should be batting him fifth instead of seventh. The umpire is trying to keep my kid from a, a athletic scholarship. Um, they have yeah. more dogs in the fight and it's becoming uglier and the and where the parent goes in in youth sport there the sportsmanship goes mm. no question well i'm i'm looking at it from um that is a real challenge <clears throat> uh, unfortunately i would just going back to this is that team sports so are is i know like you ask me who the greatest who had the greatest impact in my life my dad yeah. and my football coach yeah as far as as far as bringing out um that commitment to one another, my my fellow, I still have friends that I played football with, you know, um, um, that that there was there was something about that environment that builds character. Um, I don't I don't want I know the issue with the parents getting over involved and things like that, but there's something about <clears throat> being in an, an environment where other people are really counting on you, and yeah. where they and where they challenge you to be better, and where there's an encouragement and there's an inspiration and there's a coach you know, that really believes in you and calls you out and challenges you. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. where I think um, uh, that that to me is why sport uh, uh, s- athletics are s- especially important for a young man. I know they're great for, for young women, too. Uh, but I'm just, because my focus here is on men and on this show. Um, yeah. It's really important to be, I think, not not that all should be involved, but uh, that 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 being uh, involved in a, in a physical environment for a young young man is is critical what, i wonder wondering what you think about that the benefits of that no there's no question that it's part of many boys upbringing and i agree with you many boys who were either either went down the wrong path in life or they actually went down the right path in life 
which I think I'm in, involved in that. I thought my dad was attentive to us. He taught me sport as well as uh, some other uh, virtue. And but I also learned it from my Catholic school. I went K through 12 Catholic school and I had some outstanding teachers. I had some outstanding coaches and there were some priests. And I remember these two deacons in particular, just before they, um, they you know, they were uh, transitional deacons. And I met them in that year and they were of great influence to me. And they can do the opposite of what these parents I referred to. And that, mm -hmm. that is they can teach you discipline. And what does it mean to be a disciplined athlete? They can teach you forgiveness. It's a it's mm. a sacrament. It's mm. a virtue, but it also extends to sport. Mm -hmm. And when when a teacher or your dad or a, the parish priest or your coach, whatever the whoever that person is, they can pass that on to you and explain how our faith can be applied to these aspects of sport. So it doesn't matter whether you're a coach, an athlete, a parent of an athlete, an administrator, a referee we can bring our faith to the field. And that is what good coaches have done. Mm -hmm. They've said, no, our faith is not just for Sunday between 11 and 12 o'clock, between 9.30 and 10.30 on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Our faith is meant to apply and it, and it needs to extend to the track, to the field, to the court, whatever the case is. And these virtues are how we demonstrate our love for God, our love for uh, and respect for our fellow man. And you think oh, about, yeah. you know, like my, my sons and my daughter, too, but my sons, uh, two of them went all the way to uh, black belt. I, I'm, a, I'm a ninja black belt. Uh, two of them went halfway through that environment of, of, of testing and, and, and being encouraged by your by the people that you're 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 sparring with that. So that total interaction. Uh, and then some of them worked on the beach, you know, uh, teaching surfing lessons, which is very physical. There's a lot involved there in the area of, of, of virtue because uh, it takes fortitude to do sports, yep. which is one of the, cl the classic virtues. Justice is involved. Are you being fair? Like when you're playing basketball and you have to call a foul on yourself, or you're playing golf, are you keeping okay. score right? You know, uh, okay. pr a prudence, uh, the, the whole area of, of coaching has to do with prudence. You know, what, what plays are we going to play and things like that. And self mastery, you know, are you, do you, okay. do you control yourself? So in all those areas, uh, whether it's an individual sport or you're, or you're, or you're surfing or martial arts or, or playing in a team sport, those classic virtues all can be developed. And then when you look at the, the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love, if you can, if you can, uh, you know, one of the things that I see nowadays that we used to never do is that one of the, when one of the players fall down, all the other players come over and help, help, help them up, whether it's on a football yeah. field, baseball field, or on the basketball court. That's love. That's, 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 that's teammanship. That's people reaching out and willing the true good for other. And not to be uh, opposed to your opponent, not to put your opponent down, because your opponent, a great opponent, brings out the best in you. It, may, it makes you sure. rise to the occasion. We're talking with Dr. John Aquaviva in his new book, Improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and Common Sense. We'll be right back with more. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. 
It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everyone to go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Uh, you get uh, a newsletter from us that has... Uh, the, our, our radio show, the YouTube version of the radio show is delivered to you on Saturday mornings. Uh, one of our 60-second shorts that you can share with your friends and other inspiring things. So go to our website, uh, bearschoolofmanliness.com, and subscribe to our newsletter. Our guest today is Dr. John Aquaviva, Ph.D. with, West, with Wingate, you know, uh, Wingate University, and uh, his newest book, Improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and Common Sense. Um, can you dig into us more about, about, the, about your book? Sure. The um, the one the, the motivator for it in the original outcome of the motivator uh, was my radio show in 2005, just before his death. It was just months, maybe a year before John Paul II's death. He created a, a what's called an office of the laity, and it's called the office of church and sport. Mm -hmm. And this was his vision for the world of sport. He said. There is mm. virtually nothing bigger in our universe that brings man together to to demonstrate, to allow them to demonstrate their faith in a specific arena. And again, what we tend to do, and in the last segment we talked about this, is we tend to like leave our faith maybe at home or it, within the church and so forth. But it clearly extends, as you mentioned, with all those virtues of fortitude and perseverance and respect and so forth. And that's what JP2 set out to do. And as a result of that, that literally uh, motivated me to create a TV or a radio show based on this. It's called Faith in Sport. You mentioned in the beginning, it's on Radio Maria. And I talk about this weekly, and we talk about character, ethics, and morality as it relates to the world of sports. So it's a, it's a sports show. We like to talk X's and O's and scores, but we put that to the side. And we again, we talk about these virtues and how it's demonstrated or how people have failed to demonstrate it and maybe encourage the listener to act in a different way when this is a particular scenario. And as you know, uh, just the transgender is, you know, athlete issue alone creates a lot of good conversation. And mm -hmm. but there's a lot of there's a lot of points to be made on how we can apply our faith to the world of sport. And it's it's endless. And here's why, Bear, because every day games are played right mm. every day like right now um you know we're in the hockey season the basketball season's in full swing baseball season starting and so forth there's always something to talk about and people do two things right they go along and they show they demonstrate virtue and that's what we talk about in the show that's what i talk about in this book and they fail to demonstrate virtue and that's what i talk about on our show and that's what i talk about in the book and how our faith ultimately helps that and I'll give you a, a specific example. One of the chapters is just on the holy sacraments and sport. Mm. And this is a great example. When we, I give ex specific examples in the book. For instance, if you are going to go to confession, you've seen this bear. I've seen this. Like, for instance, we went to confession as a family just two weeks ago. And outside of the confessional was a little pamphlet and it had the Ten Commandments. But it didn't just have the Ten Commandments. It had about 10 to 12 bullet points after each commandment and how it can, our daily sin can be applied to that particular commandment. And I think sport stretches into that. We are disrespectful. We are mean. 
we are um, we uh, lack forgiveness on, for instance, a referee who we feel has done us wrong. We retaliate sometimes in sport when we when the other athlete did not mean to hurt us, and then we retaliate. And all these are forms of sin if we actually do that. And mm. that's where our faith comes in. Our, our, our Lord asks us to forgive, not just seven times, but seven times, 70 times. And this is an extension of our faith where it goes into sport. And I give several examples where forgiveness alone is needed within the, the world of sport. We have to forgive the coach for their uh, silly moves, their silly plays, the lack of them not playing our son or daughter. We have to forgive the umpires for their awful calls sometimes. We have to forgive one another. People, I meet students every month there here at Wingate University whose careers are ended because mm. of an aggressive play within the sport. Mm. And ultimately, what's going to help them heal from that physically is different, but what's going to help them emotionally from that is to forgive that individual because we know that an unforgiving individual is bad for our culture. It's bad for our society. Mm. And it's certainly not what God wants. Well, you know, a couple of things come to my mind. <clears throat> one is that, you know, when I was testing for my, my one of my black belts, on, on the dojo wall, was it, well, I, the, the candidates got to put their motto, and mine was, by the I can leap a wall, by the I can crush a troop, by the I can bend a bow of bronze. And another one I had for my other one was, um, um, lead me to, to the rock to how to climb, and I will climb it. It's a great way to build virtue. Um, yeah. Uh, but also, I remember hating the French judge. It's always the French judge, right? When I was competing in France, I had my tandem partner. I was, I had, she was standing in my arms, you know, standing in my hands, surfing yes. in the worst possible conditions. And I had to hold her for only two seconds because the conditions were so bad. So she's standing up while I'm surfing. Um, and she's counting out 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. I flip, catch her, and goes back to the surfboard. And the French judge says I didn't hold her two seconds. And we got second place. We're on the podium, second place. Never yes. did get my check. Yes. Can you tell I still, I'm still holding, I'm still yes. holding bitterness. No, of so, course. But, why, but, would you, but, why would you not think You that, travel right? across the world to do these things. So, but, and you put so much time and effort into it. But it is the great. It is the great testing place for so many, especially of our younger people, to learn to, to it, you know, there's an old saying in surfing uh, when it comes to competing, that is, it's just a contest, Chandler. There's a saying uh, from a movie called North Shore, Chandler, it's just a contest. It's just a contest. Yes. It's meant to bring out the best in you and the others, and it's not about destroying someone. You know, I, uh, I, one of the things I do in this book is I start each chapter um, with a quote from a pope, because I start the whole mm. book by saying, we are the only church that has formally addressed the importance of this great contemporary um, uh, issue of sport. And every pope for the last 100 years, literally, has quoted, has been quoted, and where they mm. apply our Catholic faith to the world of sport. And one of my favorite ones is the shortest one of the 10 chapters in the book, which says, better a clean defeat than a dirty victory. Wow. Better a clean, and Pope Francis said that. Mm. And that's that's really what we're called to do, right? Mm. You ultimately, for lack of a better word, or to put it bluntly, you got cheated, right? And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. athletes and fans get cheated all the time. Mm. Somebody mismanages the clock, the referee makes a bad call, the official couldn't see what happened, they can't review the, the the tape properly. I mean, how many times have you done that, Bear? Well, you watched a yeah, review. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah. You, you know, and they still get it wrong. It, it's <laughs> and and, and w one of the things that I have cherished is my 12-year-old son now. He's 12. Luke, he's a huge fan of sport. And he will constantly say, constantly say, Dad, they missed the call. They missed it. Or they why didn't they call that? Mm -hmm. And I always have to say, son, they're human and they're just like us. They're going to make mistakes just like the players do. And we need to forgive them. Yeah. And it just gives me bear this great platform to yeah. teach my son some of these virtues. Well, I, I, had a, I had a referee on my show the other day, about three months ago. And wouldn't you know he's wearing glasses. And 
<laughs> love it. But but you know what? I also just to just to come to this point about about you know I was all golfing with my son Jeremiah. It was his birthday on, this week, and he sir he he golfed four rounds. I just golfed the first round with him. He started early. But to see a human being swing a golf club so beautifully or to see someone surf yeah. so elegantly or see a basketball player do what they do, it reminds me of that, that saying from Chariots of Fire. You remember the athlete? And he said, oh, yeah. I feel God's pleasure when I run. When he runs, It was yeah. amazing what the human body can do and the beauty of it. And I believe if we take our sport to that level as, as, as a soccer, almost like a sacrament, offering to the Lord the joy of getting to move our bodies in this way and and to experience the freedom and the beauty of it uh you got one minute to wrap this up john no beautifully said brother and i think it's a good way for me i'm just gonna um dovetail off of that yeah that this is a gift i end each chapter with a quote from jp2 in, in which he says let's give thanks for the gift of sport yes. he was an active guy himself, yes he was and I love, th this is a great way to end it mm. we need to see sport as a privilege we need to see sport as a gift from god and it allows this masterpiece this human body mm. to give glory to god through the skills and the talents that are demonstrated in sport it truly is a wonderful thing and we look at through those lenses then sport is a much more beautiful thing to our hearts. I agree. I think sometimes I go, God, did you like that? Like I drop in a wave and somehow something magical happens. I go, Mary, uh, Our Lady, did you like that? You know, isn't that cool? Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? It's like, it's like there's Love a joy in, in the human body. Yes. God loves the human body. I mean, he became incarnate, you know. He became man. Right. So John Aquaviva's new book is what's your title again, John? The book's title? Impro improving Your Sportsmanship Through Catholic Teaching and common sense there it is and includes yeah and includes a chapter on the transgender athlete and what the bishops have said about that it's a great read and it's for coaches fans athletes of of uh or parents of athletes and the parents and the grandparents and so forth so no. it's a it's a read for virtually anybody that's involved in sport thanks for being on our show uh, we got to run until next week may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you aloha Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.